all that big money I'll be paying you, you have to do a couple of things. First thing you need to do, check your air, make sure you can breathe it in the middle. Next thing you want to do is check your top. Make sure it's good and sound and solid. The next thing you're going to do, you're going to pick up this four foot drill. You're going to place it against the seam of the coal, put your brace, brace, check, put your brace on, and you're going to drill me three holes. And this seam of coal, I want one on each side, one in the middle. Now, when you get that done, before you leave the face, pick up this pick. While you're laying on your stomach, make this undercut under your coal. The reason for that undercut is so when you shoot the coal, it will drop cleanly down from the top. I got to stretch, people without busting up much of the rock. Now, you'll have to excuse me, I'll run out of air. Now, once you do that, you'll take your paper, pour your black powder in it, twist it into a stick, place it in the hole. Upon doing that, you'll pick up your taping rod. This is brass to keep from causing the sparks setting the powder off. You'll tamp the powder in good and tight. Pack the hole with mud, tamp it in good and tight. Upon doing that, you're going to pick up your pick. Place it in the groove, put it in the hole, shove a hole in the black powder. Pull it back, put your fuse on, shove it into the black powder. Now, upon doing that, i got to stretch. Ah. You want to tie your three fuse together? We're out here about 20, 25 feet. But before you do anything else, you gotta let the other miners working around you know that you're gonna put a shot off. Reason being, should you shoot that coal down, you hit a pocket of methane, and you now have a violent mine explosion. They need to be prepared to try to get to safety. So you're gonna go, excuse me, let me get my mouth water. <laughs> fire, fire, fire the hole. If you want to hear that, they'll get prepared. You'll then take your lamp, light your fuse, Crawl around the side, wait for the shot to go off. You wait for the smoke and dust to clear. You'll come in, check your air, check your top. Set your safety timbers. 
You'll then pick up your wooden rails. That's right, in 1890, we didn't have steel rails underground. You'll lay your wooden rails down. You'll back your one-ton car up into here. You will then pick up this automatic loading machine called a number four coal shovel. And ladies and gentlemen, while you're laying, laying on your stomach, you will load that one-ton car full. Now I see you all look at me like, now Ed, why would I be on my stomach? You're standing up. Look how high it is. Well, you see, in 1890, it wasn't that high. In 1958, when this town of Beckley obtained this mine, they came in, raised the height, cleaned it, roof molded it, set new cribs, new timbers, laid down new rails. You see, the height of this mine, the seam of that coal right there, would have been the only height the man had. He were looking at this height right here. Not this, and not this. Now, as a company, I love this number four shovel. You see, it's made me and my company millions with an S. But I want more than that. You see, like most of them, I'm tired of being a millionaire. I want to be a multi-millionaire. So in the early 20s, Jeffrey Machinery built this yellow-looking machine back there with margin on it. And I'll drop it down slow so you all can see this. It has a shovel on the front you'll drop down in the corner. As you tram forward, it will fill up. It has loading arms. It looks like little hangings. And as you tram forward, you turn them on, and it will pull the coal in. It has a trough that has a chain with flat pieces of metal out through it to draw the coal back through that trough into a car in the back waiting to haul it to a belt head or to the outside. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll keep the coal in front of that little fella, he'll make me a lot of money. Yeah. But to show you how good I am to my employees, I'm going to give you a raise. I want you to enjoy the money I'm making. You see, I've been paying you $2 a day, right? Well, we'll give you a 50 cent on a day raise. Ain't that nice of me? One of us is going to be a millionaire anyway. <laughs> now, in 1963, I built Drumheller from here in Beckley. And then the first coal scoop, that's that orange thing right there. He bought a truck, took it home to his garage, took the transmission rear end out of it. He built this orange metal frame around it. He used electric motors and hydraulic cylinders. Today, we use them to haul coal off the sections. We use them to clean up the sections. We use them to haul supplies on the sections. I've hauled men in and out of the mines in them. I've also roof, I've also rock dusted the mines with them. <coughs> the problem of it is, when that gentleman built that machine, he didn't get a patent. He and his family lost millions upon millions of dollars because today, everybody and their mother makes one of those things. Any questions? All right, I told you a while ago we don't mine rock. You notice this coal miner stacks all his rock neatly over here against the rim. The reason, get, reason being, at the end of his shift when he backs his car in here, he only has to load all the rock for that day from one side in this mine. You see, he wants outside. He wants to get off his knees. He wants to stand up, and he wants to take a breath of fresh air. So he loads all his rock on one side. He doesn't have to crawl around this low section loading that rock from both sides. Make sense? Let's go to our next place. Down there, everything's going to start to run off electricity. Power has now come into West Virginia and gone underground. There's my mom and papa.